Hello, I am Rob Lott. And I'm Mary Thompson Hunt. Welcome to From the Heart. Central Florida is widely known for its tourist spots and attractions, but many people don't know about its thriving arts community. On this show, we are excited to introduce to you talented and passionate artists who shape our arts community. How do they create and why? And how can Central Florida benefit from an even greater arts presence? On each episode, we'll introduce you to guests who are influential leaders and artists who are truly making a difference. From the heart. With a capital A-R-T. Love that. Yes, we added that in, thanks to you. Hey, happy to help. Yeah. How are you, Rob? I'm really good. Thanks for having me back. I'm so excited to be here. Joshua, as you say, is out saving the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so whenever that happens, that's right. (laughs) Uh, So whenever that happens, I get to come and uh, stand in front of his microphone, so as to say. Actually, that's usually the one I'm... I well yeah but you've moved over to the big microphone and the big because, chair because I wanted to sit next to Gary your guest today yeah. I'm very excited about our guest listener in fact is there anything you wanted to tell us about how this morning how well it went for oh your it fundraiser? went great yeah so uh, Joshua as we know is the uh, founder and executive director of Central Florida Community Arts and we had our big annual breakfast this morning uh, where we uh, it's also um, you know. Uh, uh, sorry to let the cat out of the bag. It's also a big giant fundraising event mm-hmm. for the organization. Uh, and it's it's the biggest fundraising event that we do all year long. And uh, and it was very successful. Really, really fun. We had a whole bunch of great performances and everybody got to um, have pancakes and waffles. And oh, all I'm so things. sorry I missed it this year. Well, I, you were there. Your voice was there. I did Intr- welcome yes, everyone. Yes. You did. You welcomed everyone <laughs> and you introduced uh, everybody. We heard your voice. Uh, but you're, you, you were not there and you were missed. No, but. I was in, in Pandora this morning. Oh, very Good. Yes, we had a special uh, event, which I'm finishing up tonight, believe it or not. Oh. You know what, those Disney jobs, they'll call you in at different hours and you don't know, <laughs> who am I this time, right? <laughs> um, well, I am very excited about our guest that we have today. Yeah. Let me tell you a little something about him. He is known for his ongoing travels across the United States. He is a two-time National Geographic author, a leading motorcycle journalist who wrote the nation's best-selling motorcycle guidebook, and the writer selected by Visit Florida to serve as the state's off-the-beaten-path insider. Um, He's a recipient of Lois Thomas Travel Journalism Awards, I believe more than once. Uh, books, articles, presentations, professional speaking engagements on calendar talent, including Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I'm just adding that because that was so much fun to watch you today on that. But this man is the real deal um, person who has a passion for life, has done so many things, and he's going to share with us what he's up to next in life. So welcome, Mr. Gary McKechnie. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi, Rob. Hi, Mary. So glad to have you here. It's great to be here, as they say. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, now, we met, uh, gosh, Maybe 10 years ago? Yeah, pro- I'm, I'm thinking 10 years ago in yeah. Mount Dora when mm-hmm. uh, you, Jill Sharga, and Carol Stein um, came in to do a show. Uh, that you produced? Yeah, that that, that uh, I produced with my wife, Nancy, mm-hmm. called uh, an, an Evening of Estrogen, and, and it was a smash hit. Uh, yes, it was all comedy. Yeah, uh, it was So great. Carol did her, we did our act together, some mm-hmm. improv and makeup songs and mm-hmm. some sketches that I did, and Jill did her stand-up, and... Those were so much fun, and yeah. but you you struck a, struck me even then as such a generous man, oh. uh, loving the arts, bringing the community yeah. together. Oh yeah, his yeah. Mountain Dora came out and like packed that house. We did it what three years? Yeah, yeah, and and, and that was great. It, and um, you, you know, sort of a reference to the arts that we're talking about because this is a show about the arts. Um, Nancy and I had produced shows. She was head of the uh, Mount Dora Music Festival, mm-hmm. and uh, I was doing shows. I was. Uh, actually, at the time, uh, this is going back to 2002, 2003 or so, mm. and I was working as a, a, a stringer for People magazine. Mm. And I had interviewed Roger McGuinn, who was is the lead singer of The Birds, Turn, 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 Mr. Mm-hmm. Tambourine Man. He lives here in Orlando. And uh, so we produced a show with him as a fundraiser for the Mount Dora Library Association. It's like, hey, this is pretty good. Because I had asked them when I got on the Library Association board, I said, how, you know, what is my role? They said, well, we raise money for the library. And I said, how much do you raise? And they said, well, we can get $200, you know, selling hot dogs. And I'm thinking, you know, you could probably make multiples of that doing shows. <laughs> and uh, so when we started uh, producing shows with uh, Roger McGuinn and Janice Ian and John Sebastian and the Love and Spoonful, you know, and, and Did, really... Was it the Mama and Papa's? Or yeah, we had, we, well, we had a Mama and Papa's tribute band. We yeah. had a, we've had tribute bands there before. Mm-hmm. But we what, what happened... Uh, where you performed at the Mount Dora Community Building around 2002, 2003, mm-hmm. as we're starting to bring these acts in, we realized this 1929 building was falling to pieces. Mm-hmm. So Nancy and I started this group called Backpack, Building a Community Performing Arts Center. Oh. And um, 
you know, n no other motivation other than to give something to the community. And so we started uh, Backpack, and we went out and, you know, started raising funds, and we raised about $40,000 in seed money. And wow. then the, then the uh, city took notice and said, hey, this was a good idea. And we knew it was going to be a social, economic, and cultural generator for Mount Dora. So we put our heart and soul into that. Mm -hmm. And so when you all came in, you were actually one of the fundraisers wow. for that. And wow. so uh, ultimately it got like three and a half million dollars uh, in renovations. Wow, and it's still, you know, we're still doing shows there. But the thing, people were saying we're going to tear this thing down, this beautiful classic old building. But that's what's important, you know. It's, it's getting people out to appreciate the arts, stage shows, speakers, performers, documentaries getting people out to do that. And so, you know, that was, that was a passion of mine. That was, was to get, it was a great way to meet going. you. And, but what, it, what strikes me is that you saw a need for the community and mm -hmm. for some reason you said, well, let's just fill this need. Yes. And you stood up for that, which is yes. kind of why you're here today too. When did your awareness for civic duty start to feel like this was for you? Um, I think, well, a, cu a couple of things. Uh, there, there was one way back when, and there's one, relatively recently. The way back when is when I grew up here in Maitland. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Florida native. I went to Domerick Elementary, Maitland Junior High, Winter Park High School, then Valencia and UCF. Um, I used to read a lot of history. I, I was a, I was loved to read. I always loved presidential history. So I read about great men, you know, I'm, unfortunately, either at, at the time in the early 70s, you know, not a lot of women's history, which, you know, I'm belatedly uh, getting into. But at the time, I'd read about these guys, like especially Harry Truman, Teddy Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, you know, go on down the line. People who sacrificed themselves to a degree um, to make things better for everybody. And I especially loved Harry Truman. Now, here's a guy you got to think about. He was, he was uh, flat broke his whole life. He, he lost all his money in the Depression in 1923. He had a haberdashery with a pal of his from the Army lost all his money. He wasn't able to pay himself out of debt until after he left the presidency. Could you imagine that? Mm. Now, here's a guy who wouldn't take any, any kickbacks, any graft or corruption. Here's a guy who is flat broke. His mother-in-law is saying he's a failure, even when he's president, but he wouldn't take a penny until after he got out of the White House, and then he had to earn it to pay off his debt. Mm. And I looked at that, and I would read this stuff, and it's sort of a Pollyannish view of public service, but I thought, that's the kind of man I want to be, you know? just doing the right thing. So I love Harry Truman. So how did you cultivate that into action during the course of your life? It was it, it was just having a desire to do it. Uh, I don't want to waste my time here. Life is a one-way trip, and I'm going, you know, all of us are going in the same direction. <laughs> so by the time, you know, by the time we get done, if you look back on your life and you've only uh, satisfied yourself and you've only looked out for yourself and you haven't looked out for the other guy and you haven't looked out for your community, then you've led a pretty, you know, I, I, you know, it's tough for me to say, but you've led a pretty selfish life. You know, we're all here. I've got this book in front of me called The Common Good. We're all here to help everybody else. You know, you can't just look after yourself. You can't be uh, uh, so, so selfish that you, you won't do anything for anybody else. You won't give up your time. And, you know, that's, that's what I've enjoyed doing. I've, I've done it in, in Mount Dora uh, through different festivals, uh, different productions, different uh, uh, civic improvements that I've tried to, to, to champion. Um, and I'm doing it now in this new role I'm in as a candidate. Um, because, you know, you want to give back. I think everybody has a desire to give back in some way. And I have no ulterior motive other than to do that. I think, I think maybe it's, it's, just in me from having read history and being a student of history, that we all have a responsibility uh, to, to our city. You see something that needs to be done, fix it. Yeah, and, it. And, and I'll tell you I'll tell you something. I'm sorry if, I, if I'm going a little bit farther afield. I love it. I love uh, it. Just keep talking, man. When, Enjoying it. <laughs> I, I teach students up in Washington, D.C. Every spring I go up to Washington, D.C. I, I, uh, I'm a teacher or an educator, or they call it a course leader, with a group called World Stride. So we get middle school students from all over America. I mean, I, I get them from Michigan, from uh, Nebraska, from Oregon, from uh, Maine, all over, 13, 14-year-old kids. And we take them around Washington, D.C. And I'm, their, I'm sort of their tour guide for like four days. You know, we'll go to the Capitol. We'll go to Fort Cedar, the White House, Arlington. We'll go to uh, Lincoln Memorial, Vietnam Vets Memorial. And when I take them to the Martin Luther King Memorial, I asked him, I said, do you know who Martin Luther King is? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who Martin Luther King is. I said, have you ever heard of Rosa Parks? And they go, 
oh, yeah, yeah, Rosa Parks. And we talk about her. I said, what did she do that was different? And they go, she sat down. I said, yeah, she sat down. I said, were Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks the only civil rights leaders? And they think about it, and they know it's a leading question. So they said, no. I said, who else was there? And they scramble around. They might come up with Ralph Abernathy or something or Thurgood Marshall. And I said, hey, I said, there were freedom riders on buses. There were guys sitting at lunch counters at Woolworths and having people beat the hell out of them just to get them out of the seat because they were black. And I said, and, and I tell them, I said, kids, you know, it's up to you to step up, to speak up, to speak out when you see injustice anywhere. It's a threat to justice everywhere. And, you know, and I kept telling these kids, you have to do something. You have to do something about it. And this was the second, the second thing that really set things into motion for me because when I kept, got back home and I was asked to run for public office, I, man, I was looking for, you know, every exit, you know, <laughs> anywhere I could run not to have to do it. And then I started thinking about these kids and tell, me telling them that they have to get involved if they see injustice, if they see prejudice, if they see somebody making fun of the handicapped guy. And, and I'm thinking about my comfort level and, hey, how could I benefit myself by not doing something? And then I thought, what right do I have to tell somebody else to do something that I'm not willing to do myself? Let's back it up a little bit because yeah. you just mentioned running for public office and we hadn't said that yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so <laughs> go ahead. It's out of the bag. Well, it's out <laughs> of the bag, yeah. but let's make the announcement. Drum roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, about, it was just about a year ago. Um, I, I had been asked to run for office in Mount Dora before because, you know, I, I had. For somewhat, what office? Uh, mayor. Mayor. You did know? you run for it? No, no. Okay. Uh, in city council, my, my, my wife and I had a bed and breakfast and I was always traveling. I was mm-hmm. working on books. I was worked on Yeah, well, because we want to talk about that too. You've traveled oh, okay. the whole country with your motorcycles and you're yeah. traveling and all that. But, but yeah. let's just go back to what office you're running for now. Yeah, I'm running for, <laughs> uh, I'm running for Florida State Senate in District mm-hmm. 12. And mm-hmm. that District 12, uh, if you're within this area, uh, it's North and East Lake County. It's all of Sumter County mm-hmm. and it's Southern Marion County. So it's a pretty wide swath. Of, uh, and what's the Central biggest Florida. difference you see yourself being able to make as a senator there? Or what, You know, I, I've always said, I've always looked at the role of a public servant as someone who does the most good for the most people. And so the scope of my commitment to public service, you know, in whatever capacity I've done it over the last, uh, you know, lifetime, <laughs> uh, would be magnified. Uh, because, you know, there's three, four 400,000 people in this district that need somebody to look out for them. They need an advocate for them, and they're not getting that advocacy right now. Uh, they're not getting it in wages. They're not getting it in health care. They're not getting it in education. They're not getting it in safety at schools. And so and I, I want to do— they're not getting it in the arts? It, oh, by God, no. <laughs> by God, no, the arts, you know, and it's every man for himself when it comes to the arts. But, you know— Bring we, your we, own crayons. Yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's just sort of crazy. So my—, my perspective is that you have to do the most good for the most people and that's what I'm out to do and and I'm not just running I'm a Democrat uh, a proud Harry Truman Democrat I call myself but I'm not running to just represent Democrats and a lot of a lot of folks on the other side of the aisle and some Democrats too to be fair will just run with that base in mind but you can't do that if you're a public servant you've got to serve the public Mm -hmm. and and man my my record would show my lifetime would show that I'm trying to, you know, look out for everybody. And, and an even tide raises all ships, and that's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring an even tide back into Florida uh, politics and Florida government so everybody, you know, wins. Well said, well said. Thank you. Well, uh, we are just about out of time for this segment, but okay. we are coming right back. Gary McKechnie running for Senate. How exciting. Thank you, Rob Law, for being here. I'm Mary Thompson Hunt. We'll be back on From the Heart. You're listening to From the Heart with a capital A-R-T. I am Rob Lott, and I am sitting here with Mary Thompson Hunt, and we are sitting here with Gary McKechnie, 
um, who just announced he's running for Senate. <laughs> Big announcement. Yeah. Um, so, but be, uh, we, we talked a little bit about that in the first segment. But of course, this being from the heart with a capital A R T, uh, we did, we, we know that you have a background um, in arts and creativity yeah. right. and being on stage and right. producing right. Uh, as well as writing. And so, yeah, we wanted to definitely stand spend up. some time. Stand up comedy. Right. We wanted yeah. to spend some time uh, chatting with you about that. So sure. let's get into the way back machine. Uh, <laughs> what 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 got you started um, of, of just that spark of wanting to, oh, you know, there, there's certainly to, a, to a perform. Of, yeah. to perform. Well, yeah. You know, I just found out, I mean, you work at uh, the Hoopty Doo Review, which I, do. I mean, dazzles me. I mean, it completely <laughs> thrills me. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just jump through a few things. Um, I was always, uh, you know, sort of the class clown at, uh, you know, Domrick Elementary, Maitland Junior High. Uh, in high school, Winter Park High School, had a punk band, uh, you know, because I was really into punk rock at the time. And then I was always influenced by comedies, Sm Smothers Brothers mm -hmm. especially. And uh, so about 1980, I guess, I, was, I graduated high school in 1980, and a comedy club opened up in town called The Funny Farm right on Park Avenue. Is I, I'm that sorry, where you met Jill Sharga? Yeah, absolutely. That's where I met Jill. That's and, how you uh, And I was nervous. I was terrified. I was trembling. Uh, I, I didn't perform there first. I performed at a like an open mic comedy night, sort of a gong show night at some seedy bar. <laughs> and but it was sort of like I knew I had to do it. There was something inside that said, "Man, you you want to be on stage. You need to be on stage." And so that's what I did. My act was terrible. It was horrible. But uh, it was sort of like, "Hey, they didn't kill me, so maybe <laughs> I live to fight another day." And so I, I started like working on comedy stuff. And then I started Bill Cross. I don't know if you know Bill Cross. He was a DJ here. Great guy. He, uh, you know, when I was going to college, I was writing bits for his radio mm. show. And he, I remember one day he gave me a check for $125. I said, what's this? He goes, for, for the, the stuff you wrote. Yeah. Wow. I said, no, no. I said, that's easy for me. He goes, Gary, you got to get paid. Aww. And, you know, I didn't know show business had a business aspect to it. But it was great. I mean, so I'm in college and all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm working the Jungle Cruise. So I'm telling jokes constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm writing now for a radio show. And then I started working at the Funny Farm, writing stuff and appearing in sketches there. And it was like, man, this is really sort of cool. I liked it. And then it just, you know, continued from there. And then when I became a, a, a freelance writer after I graduated with a degree in radio and television, you know, I became a freelance writer, traveled all over America. and then On I was, your motorcycle. Yeah, on my motorcycle. Because you've written a book about it. Yeah. I, I, th the first time I was just doing it to do it. I would mm -hmm. work a job. Uh, and make a few bucks, and then I would quit the job and get on my Kinda, motorcycle. Then came Bronson. Yeah, then that was came, my favorite good, show good as you. a kid. Good for you. Yeah, then came Bronson, and um, so it, it so you traveled the country on your motorcycle. Oh, you, absolutely. You had this way of following your bliss. Yes. I wanted to try comedy. I'm going to see the country. Yes. You follow that, and now is that same part of you telling you run for office? Well, well, I'll, I'll jump okay. to that, but let me let me just. Uh, mention something that would hopefully help help your listeners because if they're interested in the arts, uh, there's a passion there somewhere because you know you don't make a lot of money as a poet or a philosopher you know or necessarily an artist you know some some of us are very fortunate and we were able to to, to do that, but I got to a point one time where I just laid into a friend of mine he had he he's older than I am but he was traveling all over the world doing everything he wanted everything that I'm blessed to be able to do today he was he was all over the place. And he said, what is, what is your passion? I said, I don't know. I was 26 years old, 20, yeah, 27. I was 27 years old. My mother had just passed away at the age of 54, which had sent me into a tailspin for like mm. eight or nine months. Uh, so I was sort of lost. I was adrift. And he said, look, and he asked me what my passion was, what I really wanted to do, and I had no idea. And hopefully your listeners will benefit from this because finally he said, look, Gary, he said, if you had a million dollars in the bank and you, you went to your bank tomorrow, you had a million dollars in your account, what would you do? How would you spend the day? And I said, oh. And all of a sudden, I took money out of the equation because I'd always, you know, we're all taught, you know, from mm -hmm. elementary school on, man, you got to get the score. You got to make that mm -hmm. money. You got to have that bucks. And it was like, hey, if I took money out of the equation, I said, I would travel and I would write. He said, there you go. And I said, what? He said, that's what you really want to do. All this other stuff that I was talking about, you know, I I'd rattled off like a dozen things. He, he said, um, he goes, you want to travel and write? And it was like, all of a sudden the penny dropped. It was like, yeah. He said, whether you have money or not, you're going to be happy doing that. 
And he said, make a few bucks and you'll be okay. Mm. And so that was 30 years ago. And ever since then, I've, I've, I've had that attitude. When I get stuck, it's like, if I, if I didn't have to worry about money, what would I do? And then I follow that passion. And is this your next thing, uh, Senator, being a politician? Y- you know, it's, it's, um, I can't honestly say it's a passion. I think it's a moral and a civic responsibility okay. and a duty. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm good at it. I don't want to say I'm natural at it. It's a new suit that I'm wearing. Mm-hmm. But I've read enough history and I've tuned into enough uh, history, Florida history especially, to know when things are going off the rails. You wrote a book about Florida history too, right? Yeah, yeah I, I write for Visit Florida, mm-hmm. and so I cover rural counties, you know, Gilchrist, Levy County, Jackson County, Columbia County, all these places that most people don't even go to. And I go there, and I see how there are two distinct and separate Floridas. And uh, so I've, I've written about these places and just trying to bring, you know, introduce Floridians to fellow Floridians because we're all in this together, by God. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so that's, you know, that's, the, that's what I've done. I wrote a book on the history of, of, of Mount Dora. And I've, uh, my book, Great American Motorcycle Tours, is about traveling across America on Great a motorcycle. Pictures, yeah. And I've written, you know, a book for National Geographic called USA 101 about iconic, 101 iconic American places, events, and festivals around America. And I lecture at sea. I go out, you know, travel the world, and I speak about America. I can't remember what it was, but this was a couple years ago on Facebook. Someone wrote something, and I answered something, mentioning something in history briefly, and you replied, (laughs) oh, that's the, the," and it was this long history (laughs) lesson of like, oh, my God. And then I went, oh, that's right. He's in this. This is what he does. Yeah. 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 And I was so honored that you took the time to write such an in-depth well, you know, description of it. you know, and, and I go back to what I said, man, we're, or we're only in this one time mm-hmm. and by God, man. And, and here's a great quote because I used to write for Valencia. I, I wrote a, 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 a booklet for them, you know, to talk to high school students about going in there. And one of the quotes I used, it was like, look at life like a canvas, throw as much paint as you can on it, on mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And man, that's what we all should be doing as artists, as, as citizens, is, is just people. Mm-hmm. Man, get as much out of this as you possibly can. So this this Senate race that I'm in right now, and, and I'll, one thing, and I'll tell you, you, you mentioned Facebook, I believe it was. I remember one day I was on Facebook and I was on, uh, I was moaning and complaining about the Florida Democratic Party and how rotten they are and how, how incompetent they are. And I'm just like lacing into them, you know, laying into them. It's like, why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing that? And this guy just cut me short. He just said, what are you doing about it? Ooh. Man, <laughs> man. Well, I didn't expect you to say that. And well, all of a sudden I realized, man, I could, I could sit at my TV. I could, I could watch MSNBC. I could watch Fox News. I could watch CNN for a thousand hours a day. And I could yell at the TV and I would accomplish nothing. Until you get into the arena, and Teddy Roosevelt had that great quote, the credit yep. belongs to the man in the arena, the man whose face is marred by dust and blood and sweat, who strives valiantly, who comes up short again and again, but at least he's trying. Mm. So at least I'm trying. He did and, that. He he just gave that note without uh, that that quote without notes, ladies yes, and gentlemen. Oh, you read impressed. that a few times, haven't you? Yeah, you know, by God, I mean, and, and, and it's absolutely true. And everybody listening to this program right now, they have they have a lot of potential, a lot of potential to affect change. And people, you know, I'm sort of skipping around now. But, That's okay. We want you to. But voters don't understand the power that they have to affect change. If they want change. They have to take a few minutes out of their day on November 6th or during early voting and just do something simple and vote. And by God, if you don't do it, don't complain. And if you don't do it, then you're doing a disservice to the people I mentioned earlier, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, the Freedom Riders, the people who sat at a lunch counter, the women who were trying to get a job and being told, you know, hey, shove off. A guy can do this better than you. You don't deserve equal pay. There's a lot of there's a lot of that stuff going on in America where people have to fight for basic rights. And, and if you're not willing to do your part and basically just go out and vote in whatever candidate, whatever party you're voting for, just to do your civic duty to tune in and, and do something about it, then you, you, you can't complain. You can't just treat America. Well, you just lose credibility if you yeah, do you, you can't just do that. I, uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I want, there's <laughs> uh, something that you said that I think is important for our listeners to I have, contemplate. I have some notes here, too. You, yeah, you, and I'm, I'm, you're I'm, saying a bunch of stuff. You, you go ahead, Mary. He raised the question that changed his life. If you could do anything and money weren't an issue, what would you do? Yeah. I'm curious to know how you would answer that because I think 
if everyone did that, we're mm-hmm. in a show about the arts and we give ourselves permission to create something yeah. at that moment. What if that bigger question was really that art you're creating is your life? What would you create? What would you do any different or would you if money weren't an issue? It's interesting that you bring that up because I, I, I had the same uh, note on the same idea. And because uh, you had said um, if money was not was taken out of the equation or if you follow following your passions, you're not going to have to worry about mm-hmm. about money. Um, and I have heard it said I, when I when I was younger, somebody told me if you live your life in service to others, then you're never going to have to worry about money. Mm-hmm. You'll be taken care of yep. because you have given so much of yourself Who away. Who said that? That's Mr. Lovely. Rogers. Um, yes, his Mr. name was. Rogers? Well, Mr. It's a quote over at Rollins. They have it etched into the granite over yeah. at Rollins College. Anyway. The idea, and I, and I and I've seen it said a handful of different ways. Mm-hmm. Where I heard it was from a guy named Ron Glosser, uh, who has uh, has since passed away. He was a friend of my mother's, but she made a point of when I was very young. I think I was in middle school, and she said, "I need you to have breakfast with this guy." Mm. And, uh, and say it and again. It was well, just the idea that. Um, if you spend your life in service to others, you're never going to have to worry about money. Mm-hmm. You will be taken care of because you are spending your life and dedicating your life to taking care of others. And and everybody is actually in service to everyone else. Really, we're all just walking each other yeah. home. If you think about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, and I I wrote I wrote here earlier because you said something in the first segment. Uh, maybe remember your life is too small a thing to dedicate yourself to. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Your life is too small a thing to dedicate yourself to. So uh, whatever you dedicate your life to, it has to be bigger than you. It sure. has to be bigger than us. And and uh, so I love it, it sounds to me like you are um, uh, for sure uh, dedicating. Oh, yeah, you're, you're a helper. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Yeah. A helper. Look for the helpers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, yeah. Mr. Also, Rogers. Mr. also, Mr. Rogers. Rogers. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful uh-huh. man. Yeah. I just saw um, the uh, the fantastic documentary uh, all about Mr. Rogers. I still have not. Oh my goodness! Like... I just saw it's available. Well, I'll tell you. All later right, you'll tell us a little bit. Yeah, but everybody, it's it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, we have a lot more to discuss with you. Fortunately, we have one more segment coming up. Uh, listeners, thank you so much for listening to Magic One Hundred Seven Point Seven FM. I'm Mary Thompson Hunt here with Rob Lott, sitting in for Joshua Vickery, and we're talking with our esteemed guest today all about what he's going to be doing, Gary McKechnie. Thank you for being here. Welcome back to From the Heart with a capital A-R-T. My name is Rob Lott, and I'm sitting here with Mary Thompson Hunt, and together we are sitting here with Gary uh, McKechnie. Uh, yeah, the way that I remember that is uh, McKechnie Shin. Yes. Uh, yeah, from, from the, the Music, music Man. Man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were talking yeah, about yeah. What, what is your What's your favorite musical? Uh, my favorite musical? Uh, or play. Or singing straight in the play. Rain. Singing in the Rain? Yeah, Classic. Singing in the Rain. Uh, man, I, you know, Gene Kelly was... You know, he he was like the guy's dancer. You know, he just looked so cool and so yeah. athletic. You know, Bing, uh, not Bing Crosby, Fred Astaire, you know, had a different style. He's but suave. I would I would just watch Gene Kelly and then watch Donald O'Connor. It's like, uh, man, yeah. you, you couldn't, the, the two of them, you just couldn't beat. How about you, favorite musical? Favorite musical? Well, I, um okay, so I, I always, this is a loaded answer. Um, I wish that I always want to have like a clever answer that's like, here's a musical you've never heard of. But at the end of the day, it's Les Mis. Oh, I just love it so much. But when it comes down to a favorite role, of course, that would have to be Harold Hill in The Music Man. I think uh, that is that is a dream role for me, and I'm hoping one day to age into it. Uh, Maybe one day. <laughs> no, I'm. <laughs> but yeah, that, I, I love that role, and I love. Um, uh, but but you know, I I, I love the classics. Yeah. yeah. What's you? Uh, well, believe it or not, Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, I was very young when we saw it on Broadway, and I. That's when I fell in love with theater, and my parents took us. I remember seeing Oliver, Oklahoma, yeah. Sound of Music, old school on Broadway. Though I was yeah. lucky, I grew out, grew up near there, and then later The Wiz and Stephanie Mills. Like, oh, you mean we can be actors too? <laughs> yeah, I'm allowed to be there. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that crazy? I mean, it, it, how your parents? You know, we're all blessed where someone has given us some sort of direction in life. Where you know they planted that seed, and it's like, hey, man, I could be 
I could be on stage. Yeah. And I don't know if you know Norm Lewis. Um, he he was he was Wait. the first black Phantom yes. of the Opera yes. on Broadway. Yeah. From he, here. Grew up, he grew up From right here, down yeah. the street here in Eatonville. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he did and you I, know him back in the day? Oh yeah, yeah. The crazy thing was, I used to be in um, you know uh, talent show competitions doing stand up comedy, and Norm was doing. Uh, he was singing. He was selling ads at the Orlando Sentinel. And so he and I would see each other, you know, at, at competitions, you know, me doing comedy, him singing. And it was just sort of like, I said, what is your dream? And he said, man, if I could sing on a cruise ship, that would be the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, man. And so the next, you know, uh, we, we were in a like a, a training film together. We were, uh, you know, always seeing each other. And then we lost touch and I was up on Broadway and I go by, I think it was Miss Saigon, you know, with Norm Lewis. It's wow. like, hey, yeah. he's not on a cruise ship well, anymore. You know. <laughs> and I mean, I just love the fact that if you have a dream, you can achieve it. You know, it might not, you know, you might not get everything you want, but life is going to take you in direction. You can have your version of it. You can have your right? version mm-hmm. of it. And, you know, I've heard this great quote. I don't know if it's, a, if it's an Oriental quote. It's like, your life is none of your business. You know, we can make all these plans that, hey, this is what's going to happen, and this is what's going to happen next, and all the dominoes are going to fall, and all of a sudden I'm going to have my own show on Broadway. It doesn't necessarily happen that way, but as long as you're going in that direction, and as long as you're pursuing your passion like we've been talking about, amazing things happen. Mm-hmm. Man, just get underway and watch your life go. Oh, it's so exciting. So Did exciting. you learn any instruments as a kid? Yeah, I, I played uh, violin in el- elementary school, trombone, baritone, and tuba in junior mm-hmm. high. Uh, tried to pick up bass in uh, high school, mm-hmm. and I'm you know I'm proficient at That's you know cool. a few things. Have you robbed any instruments? I am a trumpet player. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, that was my main instrument. Um, and uh, but then uh, the the vocalists um, listening would say that uh, of course my voice is an instrument uh, that I've learned yeah. how to use. Sure uh, enough. Yeah, and um, and then there's uh, I do dabble as a drummer. I can sit in with a garage band with the best of them, um, but uh, but that's certainly not something I would ever be hired to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's got a beautiful voice. Uh, you know, and I, I just love the fact when 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 I learned, Rob, that you're in the Dapper Dan's and in, in, at uh, uh, the Hoop Dee Doo Review. I mean, for, for me, that's like superstar celebrity <laughs> stuff. It's He's like, you know, it's, hey, it's like Eric Clapton's here or something. Because <laughs> I, I, I just think that's the Because cool. I was a Disney cast member, you know, uh, as, as I mentioned, working the Jungle Cruise, working Main Street USA, working in Watercraft. And... You know, that that whole Disney culture, to me, it's I still have that pixie dust. You know, Mm. years after, you know, I left uh, the company as a as a cast member, I still bring that training and that. Mm -hmm. that, It doesn't go away. Oh, my wife and I had a bed and breakfast in Mount Dora. And man, we were always, you know, creating magic for our guests. But I'll tell you what, I think part of the reason why it happens at at Disney and I'm sure it happens. I I know it happens at our, our Universal and SeaWorld. There's a story. There's a story that we're all told. And we all buy into that story, the mm-hmm. story of creating happiness and magic. Mm. What a And that job. dreams can come true. And for many of us being there is a dream come true. I'll be 28 years under an actor's equity contract. Wow. My pension will be 28 years of yeah. an equity. Who has that? What Broadway it, show has run 28 years? And I want, no. you, I want you all to think about something else. You know, I live in Lake County in Mount Dora, and I've, I've driven out to Paisley. Do you know this story, Ponciana Cemetery, no. Paisley? No. Uh, anyway, I went, went out there one day, and somebody said, hey, you know about the Disneys in Paisley? I said, I don't know about the Disneys in Paisley. I go to the library, and the first people – ever married in Lake County on, I believe it was January 1st, 1887 or 1888, were Elias Disney and Flora Call. And yeah, Walt Disney's parents. They were married in Paisley, which is 35 miles as a crow flies from Walt Disney World. He was born from the orange Yeah, yeah, he knew knew this place. (laughs) And his his, his aunt Jesse Perkins was the postmaster there, and Walt would come down as a kid, so he knew this area. So when he had to... Um, you know, oh, look for that's a new how he knew the area. Yeah, yeah, and so when he came down, and, and in fact, the day he he spotted, I think you might know this story as well. The day he he made the decision that uh, Walt Disney World was going to be where it's at was November twenty second, nineteen sixty three, the same day President Kennedy was killed. Mm-hmm. He was flying over the area, and he flew over Bay Lake, and he saw that little island, and he said, "That's Tom Sawyer's Island." And in his mind, he started putting it get together. Now here's a here's a guy again who followed his passion every step of the way. Money wasn't an issue. He left that to Roy. Remember? Boy, that just. Re- teaches me uh, because I remember that day so well like every day something is done that changes the world for everyone Mm. whether we know it or not yeah Yeah. and and everybody's Mm. doing that I mean uh you know you're doing it you're doing it I'm I'm trying to do it and everybody listening 
is is trying to affect change in some way, and it might be something very minor. Mm-hmm. It could be something very major. But and even all of us saying we're trying to, we would like to change the world for good. People's definition of good is different. Yeah, I, I think most people know if it doesn't hurt somebody, yeah. you know, do unto like, others. Do what, that hey, and that's you the know, I, I, I don't want to draw this back in, into into my campaign, but I say that in 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 many many uh, presentations, many speeches I have to make because the golden rule. It, it has been the basis of every major religion for 4,000, 5,000 years. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And I say that. You know, why can't that apply in government as well? You know, just bring everybody up. That's yeah. why I can't understand when Jason gets so upset with me that I make every meal out of chocolate. I'm like, <laughs> well, <laughs> this is what I would have you do unto me. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard a friend, a, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine say, um, we may not change the world. When we go out today to do whatever it is that we're going to do, we may not change the world, but we can change a moment. Mm-hmm. And that moment might change a life, and that life might go on to change the world. You, you know, Perhaps it always does. Yes. I, I got to tell you, I, I'm, huh. I'm just going to share a real quick story. Uh, after I wrote my book about motorcycle touring across America, and it's now it, in its fifth edition, I think maybe around its third edition, I got a call from this guy from Arizona. And he says, is this Gary? I said, yes. And he says, I hope you don't mind uh, me calling you. I said, no, I don't. And he says, uh, my name is, I, I forgot what his name was, you know, uh, Thomas. And he said, I'm a Navajo Indian. Uh, I thought alcohol was my friend and I found it wasn't my friend. Um, I have, I have liver, uh, I believe it was like liver disease. Cirrhosis. And, and he had, a, he, he said he had like a replacement liver. He said, but I knew I was going to die, but I needed to see my nation before I died. And he said, so I went to the bookstore and he said, and I saw your book and he said, and it spoke to me. And I was just boo-hooing on the phone. And this guy would track me down and give me credit for giving him basically a roadmap to go out and see his nation. And I I begged him. I said, man, when you come down to Florida, please come and see me. You know, has he? And and, no, no, he, he never came down, but he did. He was keeping me posted as he rode from Arizona over to Maine, and then he was down, and then I think he got to Georgia and he headed back to Arizona. But you know, for to to make that sort of impact, because you don't know what you put out there when you're when you some kid could watch you, Rob, mm-hmm. in a performance mm-hmm. and say, "That's what I want to do." I'm sure Somebody many could see have. you on Main Street. Well, that's with me, it, and, and say, "That's really? what I want to do." And so I put out this book, and you know, I have no idea who this man is, but it was like it affected his life in a positive way. And what more can you ask? And, 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 you know, and again, drawing it, drawing it back to this current situation I'm in, you know, running for Florida State Senate, that's, that's all you want to do. You, you want to be a representative for all the people to improve the lives of all the people, not take, not take money away from schools, not take money away from seniors, not send a kid to school because they, they don't want to go because they're afraid they might get killed. So, you know, you got to do that. And, and, it, and whether you're a politician, an actor, a singer, that's what you got to do. Whether you're an artist and you're, you're, and you're working on a, a canvas and somebody's going to see that canvas and say, man, that, that really touches me right here. Mm. That's, that's, that's what you got to do. And then the, you leave your art and your work as your legacy. That and is even it. stories of it later on change people. Mm-hmm. Well, how, how amazing that, you know, as we talked earlier about following your passion, you are going to be the only one for all of us. As we follow our passion, we're going to be the only ones who know how to follow that passion the best. Yeah. It has to be for us. But because we know how to do it the best, it will be done the best. Yes. Thus, uh, that that does have the ability to change someone's life. Someone will be drawn to that thing that we know how to do the best in the only way that we know how because we're following that passion. And it sounds it sounds like that's exactly what has happened to you. As as Mary was reading off all of the stuff that you were that you've done, mm-hmm. you are a doer. You are an yeah. action guy. You're a get up and go guy. If the <laughs> if the if the choice is given right now between stay and go, what would you choose? I'd go. Yeah, <laughs> go man, go, Daddy O. So yeah, how. Uh, I mean, look at all that you've done, but what would you, how has that benefited you? You know, because I, I do think that there's something to be said for staying, for, for, for staying and stopping and really digging in deep in one place. But you've spent a lot of time traveling the world um, I've, and I've getting up the, and going. Rob, I've had the best of both worlds and I'm so blessed every day. I thank God uh, how blessed I am. And I get emotional about that um, because I, I was able to pick a career that would let me go and explore the world. Yet my wife and I were firmly rooted for 26 years now in Mount Dora, 
uh, with our bed and breakfast and with our, our civic projects that we like to work on. And and I have a lot to give back to Florida. I mean, I can't take any of this stuff for granted. So it's, it's you know, I, I've got this beautiful balance in my life um, where, hey, man, I, if I've got more time to, to devote to making this world a better place, why not? Mm-hmm. Man, what, what other, what better way to invest the time in your life is, than making the world a better place? And, and, and we all need to do that. We do. And that's part of the reason why this show exists, because I think when an artist tries to make beauty or a statement and tries to give a truth, which is their gift of beauty, then, then it's contributing to hopefully to good. Mm. And so sometimes people do that in service. Your calling is different at yeah. this time in your life. Yeah, th- it is. You're, you're right. This is a different calling. It's a different time in my life. And I'm going to pour it on for the next, you know, uh, several weeks as we go into November 6th. So but I, we have uh, less than a minute and a half left. I want you to once again give everyone your oh, okay. Gary2018.com yeah. website address, which you, I just oh, did. Oh, you want me to do that? You want me to say Gary2018.com or do you want to say Gary2018.com? I was going to ask Rob to say. Do you want to say Gary2018.com? I will say Gary2018.com. Oh, <laughs> you got it. Um, we hope that you'll all go there because everything you'll want to know about this candidate will um, and re- Gary will be there, and also if you have friends in Lake County, they can they can vote for you. Yeah, Lake Lake County, uh, Sumter County, and South Marion County, and uh, I mean if if they want to spread the word and you know learn about me, uh, that that's I have no ulterior motive other than to to hope, hopefully make life better. And you promise if you get in the Senate, you will do things for the arts and the artists oh, and the schools. God. And your, well, you've always have with all well, your think, festivals. Well, think how important that is. How and I we, met you, you, you produced my show. That's yeah, right. yeah. Um, you'll keep doing that. Oh, absolutely, and a hundred percent. Because in Winston Churchill, and again, I don't know if this is apocryphal. We were talking about this earlier when they said, you know, uh, are are we are we going to fight for the arts? And he goes, "What else is there to fight for?" Mm. You know, it, it, that's that's what it is. That that is an expression of humanity. It's it's, it's an expression of life. Whether it's uh, the visual arts, performing arts, uh, written literature, whatever it is. Anyway. Well, what it is, is Gary McKechnie today. Thank, thank you. you so much for being here. I wish you ball. all the best. Us too. I've had a yeah. ball. Rob Lott, this thank you fun. so much for being here. Loved it. Always a pleasure. Will you come back? Of course. I was counting on it. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. I'm Mary Thompson Hunt, and you've been listening to Magic 107.7 FM from the heart.